Breaking news tonight. Israel restarting the strikes over Gaza as the truce with Hamas collapses. Now, this comes as Israel is facing heat over this New York Times report that the Israelis dismissed intelligence of a Hamas plot a year before this attack. And with me now to discuss this is John Bolton. He's a former U.N. ambassador and was national security advisor for President Trump. Uh, this wasn't, uh, Ambassador Bolton, an intelligence failure. It, it seems to have been uh, a failure of the government to act on intelligence that they already had, right? Well, I think, I think uh, it, it helps to understand how intelligence works. A lot of information comes in to... Uh, to superior intelligence agencies, and, and Israel's are generally considered superior. A lot comes into uh, U.S. intelligence agencies, and, and one of the key things is trying to separate the, uh, the wheat from the chaff, the signal from the noise, as they say. Uh, so the fact that intelligence, look, this is a gross intelligence failure. There's no doubt about it. But, but it, it, it's not entirely clear to me that uh, that we've identified the reason for that failure. And I think that's going to be part of the uh, post-hostility forensics. Uh, you know, the, 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 the document that the New York Times reported this morning uh, could well have been examined as disinformation as a way to get Israel to focus on the wrong thing. But there was the document and there was also eyes on a uh, dry run of the uh, of this attack, what ended up being the October 7th attack that matched what the document laid out. So it's the combination of those things. Don't you think that should have raised some flags? Well, look, they failed. They got it wrong. There's no doubt about it. But the dry run could have been disinformation, too. And the New York Times report says this uh, information circulated widely within Israeli intelligence services. So I think that's some indication, if that's accurate, uh, at how widespread the failure was. Uh, you know, the, the intelligence uh, a collection brings in a lot of information, and the, the real issue is whether the screens that, that try and remove the bad information, the irrelevant information, the disinformation, work correctly or they don't. And here they clearly failed. But it's not, you can't say after the fact, well, here's the plan, they missed it, uh, as if... Uh, you know, it should have been obvious to them at the yeah. at back in the day that it was the right plan. One of the big questions now is what happens with the rest of the war. Israel says they want to move into the south pretty aggressively, but there is tremendous pressure to be more targeted in their attacks and not to kill as many civilians, more than 15,000 killed so far. Can they do that in your view? Well, I call that argument uh, that really is trying to inhibit what the Israelis do, the terrorist veto. Uh, Israel has a right to self-defense. That right to self-defense includes eliminating the threat uh, that manifested itself on October the 7th. Now, to say that somehow Israel has done something wrong here so far and may do further wrong, you have to say either that they deliberately targeted uh, civilian uh, personnel or installations, or that they failed to weigh adequately uh, the uh, importance of the military target compared to the collateral damage. And I think that that and is if, exactly if what you people say, are asking, is whether they are not sufficiently no, weighing but they have the never, collateral damage uh, versus the target, I think, which is Hamas. I, I, look, look you, you can, people can use rhetoric all the time. Let's have some specifics where they didn't uh, purportedly weigh it adequately. I, I think that there's a question here that people have to address seriously, which is the responsibility of a lot of people in the Gazan population who have been Hamas supporters and enablers. Uh, and to say that the Israelis cannot pursue their legitimate right of self-defense means, by definition, they have to live in fear of terror. That's what the terrorist veto is. I don't think the Israelis are going to succumb to it. We'll see. Uh, turning quickly now to Liz Cheney, she spoke with CBS this morning and she issued this warning ahead of 2024. Listen. He's told us what he will do. It, it's very easy to see the steps that he will take. People who say, well, if he's elected, it's not that dangerous because we have all of these checks and balances, uh, don't fully understand the extent to which the Republicans in Congress today um, have been co-opted. One of the things that we see happening today 
is a sort of a, a sleepwalking into a dictatorship in the United States. Is she right about that, Ambassador? No, I, I don't think so, with all due respect to Liz. Uh, look, I think a second Trump term would be very damaging to the United States and could cause damage in many respects that's irreparable. But I, I think it's a mistake to overstate it. Uh, I think, I think it, it exaggerates uh, the risk and underestimates the strengths of our institutions. When Donald Trump was president, he tried to steal the election and failed. Uh, so whether he can steal this one or not, we don't know. But even when he gets in, that's one branch of government. There are two other branches of government. Uh, the Constitution has lasted through, uh, so far, worse than Donald Trump. And, and I think it will outlast him this time. Although I will say again, I, and I, I think it's very dangerous to elect him president. I think uh, you've seen the reporting that I have. Uh, a lot of people around Trump who know him well uh, say that this time he has a plan to use the executive branch uh, to, frankly, break the law. Are you worried about that? Sure. I'm, I'm sure I'm one of his targets. I was before, uh, and I'm sure it will be again. But I, look, it, it is important to assess the danger, assess the threat accurately. Doesn't do any good to minimize it. It doesn't do any good to exaggerate it either. Trump will damage us if he's elected again, but he will not cause the Constitution to fall. All right, John Bolton, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Glad to be with you.